Hi everyone, Kevin here. Today we are going to look at the top new features in Zoom video conferencing. Zoom has been investing heavily and so that means there are lots of new features to check out. Feel free to use the timestamps in the description if you wanna jump around. Otherwise, let's jump on the PC and let's see what's new. Before we jump into all of the new features, if you wanna take advantage of them, well, you have to make sure that your Zoom client is the latest version. With the Zoom app open, go up into the top right-hand corner where you see your profile picture and click on that. Within this menu towards the bottom, there's an option for check for updates. Let's click on that. This opens up a prompt, and if you need to update Zoom, go ahead and do that. I'm currently on the latest version, which is version 5.4.3. If you have that, you should be able to follow along with this video. The first new feature, you can use a PowerPoint slide deck as a virtual background. How do we do that? Well, within Zoom, let's go down to the bottom bar and click on share screen. This shows all of the different items that we can share and let's click on the option that says advanced. Here we see a new option for PowerPoint as virtual background. Let's click on this and then click on share. This opens up a Windows file picker where we can select our PowerPoint file. I have this file right on my desktop. I'll click on open. This opens up my PowerPoint slide deck and check this out. I am on the slide right here. I can advance this slide deck just like I can any other slide presentation and I appear on top of all the slides. So pretty cool, right? Not only am I stuck down here in the bottom right hand corner, if I click on myself, this exposes a blue box and I can drag myself wherever I want on the slide. So I can position my video anywhere. Along with being able to adjust the position, I could also adjust the size, I simply click on the corner of this box and whoa, there I can make myself really large on top of the slide. Down below there is an ellipses and when I click on this here once again I can resize my video. That'll bring the blue box around my video. I can also split the video from the PowerPoint. When I click on this my video just comes right back up here where it typically is. If I want to bring myself back into the slide I simply click on the ellipses again and then I can merge myself into the slide deck again. Pretty cool stuff. New feature number two, you can now share multiple windows at the same time. In the past, if you wanted to share multiple windows, you would typically share your entire desktop because sharing one window and then another window was just too much of a hassle. To share multiple windows, simply hover your mouse, get the controls to appear, and then click on share screen. This opens up the sharing prompt and you can select what you wanna share. Now, in the past, you could select one item. Now, if you press the control key, you can select a second window. You could even select a third window, so you could select however many windows you want. When I click on share now, I see this window is highlighted and my other window is highlighted, indicating that both windows are now being shared. The nice thing about this is I can now share multiple windows and I don't have to share my entire desktop. Leave me a little bit of extra privacy. New feature number three, you can now have multiple people share their screen simultaneously. In the past, you could only have one person share their screen at a time. And frequently what would happen is someone else would say, well, actually, let me show you this. So you would stop sharing and they would start sharing. It was a big pain. Instead, now you can have people share simultaneously. On your meeting controls at the bottom, click on this up arrow next to share screen. And there's a new option where you can allow multiple participants to share simultaneously. Simultaneously. Let's click on that. Once multiple people start sharing, you could have two or even three or four people start sharing at the same time. At the very top, you'll have a new option called View Options, and here I can toggle between all of the shared screens. So here I see that Nestor is sharing my YouTube page. Thanks, Nestor. That, that's a kind gesture. And here, if I click on Kate, I see that oh, she's looking at buying some cookies from the Kevin Cookie Company. Two very fine websites. If you have dual monitors, you can make the experience even better. Under settings and under general, there's the option to use dual monitors. Instead of toggling back and forth between the multiple shared screens, instead you can have one shared screen on one monitor and the other shared screen on the other monitor so you can see both at the same time. It's a pretty neat new feature. New feature number four, I can now share reactions to express how I'm feeling. And I see that Kate is sharing this fantastic website with one of my favorite online stores, the Kevin Cookie Company. If I wanna express myself while I go down to the meeting controls and there's now an option called reactions. I can click on this and there's a wide variety of reactions that I can send through. For instance, I really love this website so let me send through a heart. 
Up above, you see by my picture, a heart appears and it'll sit there for about 10 to 15 seconds before disappearing. So this way people can react as you're presenting without having to unmute, say something, and then remute themselves. New feature number five, in a Zoom meeting, you can now turn on live captions. To be able to use live captions, you need at least a pro account. To turn this on, log on to zoom.us and you'll land in your profile view. Next, click down below on settings. Within settings, let's search for captions and that'll bring us down to the option that says closed captioning. Let's toggle this on and we'll turn this on. Also, let's turn on the ability to save captions and once we're all good, let's jump back into the meeting. I'm now back in my meeting and when I hover over, I now have a new option on my meeting controls. I now have closed caption. When I click on this, I could assign someone to type closed captions, but that's a lot of work. Instead, I could use a third party CC service. I can copy the API token, let's click on this. Using a service like otter.ai, I can use something called Otter Live Notes. This is where I can share live transcripts. Once again, you need at least a business account. You can paste in your API key from Zoom, and this way you'll get live captions back during your Zoom meeting. Now, let's say that you just have a basic account and you don't wanna upgrade to business or one of the pro accounts. Instead, within otter.ai, you get up to 10 hours of free transcription services per month. You can record your Zoom meeting and then click on import. You can then upload your recording into otter.ai and then it'll produce a transcript for you. New feature number six and seven both have to do with breakout rooms. And to be able to use these, first off, you have to turn on breakout rooms. Once again, within your Zoom profile, click on settings and then navigate down to breakout rooms. Here, you can toggle breakout rooms on. Within your Zoom meeting, because we turned on breakout rooms, we now have an icon for breakout rooms. And this brings us to new feature number six. You now have the ability to let participants choose the room that they wanna join. In the past, you could have Zoom assign automatically or you could assign manually, but never before have participants been able to choose. Now they could pick the room that they wanna join. New feature number seven, and this is also related to breakout rooms, you can now have your co-host help you manage the breakout rooms so it doesn't just all fall on your shoulders. Here I have Larry in a meeting with me. To make him the co-host, I simply hover over his name and then I click on this more menu. Here I can now make Larry a co-host and he'll be able to manage my breakout rooms. Ah, oh, this meeting's gonna be a lot easier. New features eight, nine, and 10 all have to do with video settings. Let's move our mouse and you'll see the camera icon in the bottom left-hand corner. Click on the up arrow here and then let's click on video settings. This drops us in video settings and new feature number eight, you can now touch up your appearance. And yes, this has existed in the past, but what's new is there's now a slider and I can set the degree of how much I want to affect my appearance. So let's see, do I need to apply my morning makeup anymore? Here I could use the slider and I'll slide it all the way over and wow, my skin is looking pretty smooth here. And new feature number nine, you can use zoom to adjust for low light. When I click Click on this box here it adjusts and I could either have zoom automatically determine the optimal lighting environment or I could click on manual and here again I get a slider and look at that I'm looking a lot brighter now I don't have any front lights on me but this is looking pretty good if I turn it off look at that it's really dark and here wow the lighting looks a lot better and this brings us to new feature number 10 in the past you can see a maximum of 25 participants in the meeting view so if you had a large meeting you can see everyone but sometimes meetings are a little bit larger you can now see up to 49 participants in the gallery view so if you have a large meeting you can still see everyone this is extremely helpful in education where you might have class sizes with maybe 30 or 35 students new features number 11 and 12 have to do with video filters and these are brand new in zoom to be able to get to video filters still within the settings view let's go over to the left hand side and click on background and filter this opens up the virtual backgrounds and there's now a new tab called video filters. Let's click on this. This brings us to number 11 and that is video filters. Here you can see all sorts of different filters that I can apply to my video. Check these out, there are some really cool ones right here, I'm in an old TV. Now I have to switch over to my favorite one because at the Kevin Cookie Company, everyone calls me the head chef so I've gotta get my head chef hat on. 
Next, let's jump on to new feature number 12, and it's right here within the video filters view in the bottom right hand corner. It's called Studio Effects Beta. I like testing things out that say beta. If we click on this, this opens up a pane on the side, and check this out. I can add some new eyebrows, a mustache and a beard, and even a lip color. This will be fun to see how these look on me. Now, if my eyebrows weren't large enough, I can make them even larger. Check that out. So here I've added some larger eyebrows. I could adjust things like the color, but I'll go with the darkest ones. I can now add a Blaze Royale beard to my face. Look at that. Now I've got a little bit of hair on my face. I also look a little bit older now. Also, I can set a lip color. So let's go with some nice red lips. How does this look? I feel like I look like the Joker. Once I'm all done, I can close and my video now has all these effects applied to it. Now we've been looking at a lot of new fun video settings, but what about audio settings? And it turns out there are also a lot of new features around audio. To get to your audio settings, simply hover your mouse and in the bottom left hand corner, you'll see your microphone. Click on the up arrow and then let's select audio settings. This opens up audio settings and this brings us to new feature number 13. Zoom now has a feature called suppress background noise. And what is this? Well, imagine you have the landscapers outside and they are running a lawnmower or maybe you have a baby crying or a dog barking. By suppressing the background noise, you can get rid of all of that. Now, during meetings, I have a bad habit of pulling out a plastic bag with tools and I like to make a lot of noise. Let's see if we click on this menu and we'll set noise suppression to high to see if it can eliminate this sound. I'm here, I'm here with Nestor's view now, now and once, once again, again, I have, I have noise, noise suppression, suppression turned on high. high. When, when I pull out my plastic, plastic bag, bag with my tools, tools I can, I can start, start making, making some, some noise, noise and you, you can still, still hear it a little bit, but it's a heck of a lot better than what we heard before. New feature number 14, I can now select ringtones for meetings or phone calls. Also within settings for audio, here's a dropdown for ringtones. When I select here, I can use the default ringtone or I can select from one of these new songs. Let's listen to what Disco Tech sounds like. Now you can rock out to more fun music anytime you get a phone call. Lastly, within audio, new feature number 15. Let's say that you're a music teacher and you want the audio to come through in the best possible quality. Down within audio settings, you can click on advanced. When you click on advanced, here there's a new checkbox for show in meeting option to enable original sound from microphone. When you check this, you get all sorts of different options. For instance, you can disable echo cancellation, you can turn on high fidelity music mode, and you can also use stereo audio. Now all of these will require a lot more bandwidth, but this will ensure that you get by far the best audio quality. Once I turn on original sound, I can toggle back and forth between using the higher quality sound and using standard quality sound. Here I simply click on this icon and this turns on the much higher quality audio. When I click on this, it'll turn it off. Here too, when I select the drop down, I could select the microphone that I want to use. New feature number 16 and Zoom got a lot of criticism for this early on and it had to do with their security practices. They've definitely upped their game in security. On zoom.us, click into settings and at the very top of the settings, what do you notice? They focus entirely on security. Down below, there's now a new option to use end-to-end -end encryption. It's currently in technical preview. You can toggle this on. Down below then, you can toggle between enhanced encryption or you could select end-to-end -end encryption. With end-to-end and encryption, the encryption key is on your computer, so not even Zoom can see what the contents of your meeting are about. Of course, when you turn on end-to-end -end encryption, some of the functionality of Zoom no longer works. For instance, captions and chat will no longer work and also recording of meetings. So just be aware that some of the functionality will go away. Once you're all good to go, click on save. Once you join a Zoom meeting, up in the top left hand corner, you can click on this badge icon and for encryption, you'll now see that it says end to end. If you click on verify, this will give you a set of numbers and you can read this out to your attendees. And if they have the exact same numbers, you can verify that end to end encryption is turned on. Of course, one of the downsides of end to end encryption is that all of your attendees also need to go into settings and turn it on. So it's a little bit of extra effort, but 
If you have a top secret confidential meeting, for instance, maybe I'm gonna be talking about the top secret cookie recipe for the Kevin Cookie Company, I would likely wanna use end-to-end -end encryption. This brings us to new feature number 17. You can now pin messages in channels or in chats. Here I have a message in this channel that says make sure to practice making cookies over the holidays. When I hover over, I see an ellipses over on the right-hand side. When I click on this, I can pin this message for everyone, and here now you see the message at the top of the channel. You can only pin one message at a time. When I hover over again, I can click on the ellipses and then I can unpin this for everyone. All right, well that was a quick look at all of the new features in Zoom. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. To see future videos like this, hit that subscribe button. If you wanna see me cover any other video topics in the future, leave a note down below and I'll add it to my list of videos to create. All right, well that's all I had for you today. I hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you next time. Bye.